Hey guys, it's Mr. ETV20 here, and uh, it actually has been a while since I've done a, a little video like this. So, um, let's try to get back into, uh, you know, what I do. And that's thinking. Thinking for YouTube. For you to subscribe. Or at least like the video because that would actually help a lot. You should, you should do that. Now, in case you haven't read the title of this video, this is all about, well, dying. I suppose you can call it a rational fear, because it's very rational. No one really wants to die. Or I guess that you wouldn't if you didn't see my other video about killing yourself. But the, the, you shouldn't you should have watched that. That's, uh, that's bad marketing. But um, why are people afraid of dying anyways? Well, I for one am not afraid of dying. <laughs> That's for bitches. I'm planning on living a really long time and dying is the last thing on my list personally. But I think that most people are simply afraid of dying painfully. I for one am not afraid of dying, but I am afraid of getting stabbed. How do you uh, how do you figure that? I'm not afraid of dying. But I am afraid of getting hit by a bus. I'm not afraid of dying, but I do not wish to suffocate. It's the whole pain thing of dying. I'm sure that's like why most people just don't want to die. And my hair is not getting any better here. Now, let's assume that, you know, it's the best day, the best case scenario. And you die when you're right, I don't know, 90 and you're the whole sick of this whole life thing anyways, and you die in your sleep. You know, it's the best way to go, as God intended, I'm sure. And what would be next? I mean, assuming you had a pretty good life, you would take all of your knowledge that you've gained over the years onto the next world. But that's just the thing. I'm not completely sure if you would be conscious in the next world, I mean, when you die, or at least if some people die by getting maybe their head cut off or smashed or some horrible shit like that, would they be thinking like it would be some kind of dream? It's kind of hard to think about because when your brain is destroyed, you are, that's you, your brain is you, so when that's gone, yeah, it's, it's very, very mysterious. Another reason why people are probably afraid of death. You have no idea what could possibly happen to you. If anything, you could just be phased out of existence. You won't remember that you were dead and you wouldn't remember that you ever lived because you have no brain to help remember. Let's just say it's the worst case scenario and uh, for some whatever reason you are no longer thinking or breathing or pretty much anything that is the wonders of life. And instead, you're in some kind of stasis where you see nothing but black and you can't even breathe. You're suffocating, but you will not die. You are in a purgatory, which you can also visit in my uh, Choose Your Own Adventure game. Just check that out. Shameless self-promotion out of the way. If that would ever happen to me, and I thought about it, that would be the worst case scenario for anybody who ever died to be in some kind of purgatory like that. I would assume that by the time I'm done damning God, I would take comfort in the fact that I'm not the very first person who died. In fact, billions of people have died and probably went to this same hellish purgatory as I have. And thus, at least if I'm suffering, <laughs> A thousand others have suffered before me, so at least I'm not the only one. Misery loves company, am I right? No? No, am I just a dick? No. Now, let's also assume that for whatever reason, heaven exists. If there's a god, there must be a heaven. And I'm afraid there must also be a hell. Now, I'm one of those people who believe that although it's quite easy to go to hell, and I suppose the Bible really didn't say anything about the hell not being internal. I would like to assume that if you go to hell, then you just, you know, pay for 
all eternity until, you know, you suffer no more, no less for your sins. It seems legit, I'm sure, but I actually looked it up. There's nothing like that. But, hey, in this day and age, no one actually believes everything in the Bible, am I right? So, if, you know, that's just assumed, you burn in hell for a couple thousand years and then you eventually, you know, get accepted into heaven. That'll be pretty awesome. And I suppose that a lot of people would, you know, use that whole heaven thing to take comfort in the whole inevitability of death. And I'm not knocking it or anything, I'm saying that, you know, that's probably what happened. And, you know, for all of our sakes, I hope that that's true. But have you ever watched that uh, one episode of... God, I cannot remember his name. It's like this medical show that had that white awkward dude with the black sidekick. His name was Turk. Or twerk. Yeah, I think it was Turk. Oh, God. I know not, not, a lot of people may know about it, but I cannot let me think about it. Anyways, there was this episode where uh, Turk was asked about how he uh, knows that heaven exists or whatever happens after death. I'm sure a doctor would know since, you know, he probably deals with a lot of people who experience death for like, what, three minutes and shit. And they experienced it as an overwhelming feeling of comfort and joy or, or some shit like that. Now, assuming that, you know, he's, uh, quoting someone who actually died for about, what, three minutes, or even an hour, I don't know how that could be, but for a while, and then came back to life, then that would definitely be reassuring for the masses, am I right? Still, you don't know what's out there, or, I guess, out there. Like, for example, maybe you shed this earthly body, your shell and spring out as a godly ghost or something and scour the world like thousands have before you I'm sure that at this point be very crowded or maybe they just have a whole solar system to themselves since I'm assuming they can fly for however long and now the omnipotent brains that they have been tending to and doing whatever with all their lives have now been shunned and free because we only use like I think 10% of our actual brain power I believe uh, something low like that but to think that maybe we use 100% after we die and you know something cool happens like we create a last a last ditch effort to live of course that's just a silly silly theory I pulled out my ass but hey what do you know maybe you become you know a ghost or um, some kind of angel. Yeah, hey, what do you know? By the end of this video, I actually say that I have no idea what happens. So I guess I don't really answer any of your questions. But, think about this. Only you have been given your specific life. Whether it was a good one, or a life of pain and suffering. It is up to you on what you do with it from then on. Death is a great mystery, but if you ask me, is a mystery worth waiting for? Until then, I recommend solving all other mysteries of life with the life given.